Where most people leave money on the table when it comes to finding new leads, generating new sales on LinkedIn is the follow-up process. Look, if people can't get a conversation started and get someone on a call straight away, they generally have trouble managing and nurturing that relationship. But the problem a lot of people have is that conversations seemingly on LinkedIn go dead. So what seems like a really hot lead, someone's really interested, all of a sudden you get this radio silence. And that's where most people give up because they obviously you don't want to annoy people, you don't want to keep harassing people. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to use LinkedIn to nurture those relationships, follow people up without annoying them. So let's jump straight into it. All right, guys, just wanted to do a quick video, like I said, on how to follow people up, nurture the relationships on LinkedIn um, that seemingly have gone cold or gone dead. Uh, and this is where a lot of people just leave money on the table. It's not super complicated to recoup that money or that cash flow, but most people are worried about, I guess, annoying people, which is fair enough, and they tend to just do nothing rather than um, recouping these relationships and getting people on the calls and moving that, those people through the sales cycle. So what I wanted to do was give you just was to give you a bit of a breakdown, like a, a usable template that you could use as part of your follow-up process. So this is based on you've reached out to someone on LinkedIn, you've connected, you've started a conversation, they seem genuinely interested in what you do, um, but for whatever reason, the conversation's just gone dead, you can't get them to respond. So I like to do a follow-up sequence and space each message out by at least a week. But generally what I do, and I'll do it here. Give that a second to load up. Is if someone hasn't responded, is send a follow-up one. Our first follow-up message. And obviously what you can do is follow up to follow up three. So I tend to like to send three follow up messages at max if I'm not hearing back from someone. The truth is on LinkedIn, people don't check it that often. It's not like their email inbox um, and you're not at the top of these people's priority lists. So if they forget to check the message or reply, um, they're not going to have it, you know, on their list of things to do. They, they'll just move on with their day. So it is important to get those touch points in and follow someone up if they've expressed some interest. It's, it's important we find the more touch points we can get in, the more people I've found um, tend to actually respect that. It's up to you to take onus of the relationship development and really make sure that you know, people will um, engage with you if they have the interest. So like I said, I like to send three follow-up messages and space that by at least a week. But what I have found good as well is to get more touch points in without actually sending more messages is to add some spaces in there as well. So rather than just simply messaging someone, we can add other forms of engagement on LinkedIn. And the reason this is powerful is it lets us get touch points in without annoying the person, but floating our name to the top of their inbox. So I'll start with the follow up messages. Um, and each one of these is spaced out by at least a week. So you can see over time, it can take quite a while for this full touch point sequence to go out, which is why you need a good system. And we have our own CRM system to manage this, to tell us what touch points need to go out when, so that we can continue to nurture these relationships. So the first um, follow up I like to use is similar to this. Hey, just a friendly follow up on my last message. It doesn't have to be anything more crazy than that. You might say it in your own words, but it's basically just to follow up your last message and, and bring your message back up to the top of the inbox. Next, what, next message I like is, 
hey, just another friendly follow-up if you prefer. And then what we want to do is be respectful of their time as well. You know, if we prefer, we're trying to get permission to get a touch point in later. If we can just get some form of communication from them, it sort of starts the sequence again. Um, and we're, we're just getting some form of engagement. We really want to try and get them to engage with us. So just another friendly follow-up. If you prefer, we can organize a chat some other time. So we're being respectful of their time and trying to get some form of engagement and permission to make contact later. And then I like to finish. If we're not getting anything, we really just need to say, look, I'm not going to message anymore. Um, just one follow-up, last follow-up. Don't want to clutter your inbox any further. Um, and then try and just get something else out there, like try and get them in some way add extra value. Um, if we can send them a resource, then they can read it in their own time and hopefully, you know, see the value in what we do um, and just get more of us and our business and our brand in front of them. So, like I said, it doesn't have to be super complicated and we're spacing that out by essentially one week minimum, but if we're doing the engagement in between, then what we're going to do is space it out by about two weeks between these messages. So what I mean by engagement is rather than just going on LinkedIn in a spray and pray approach and, and commenting on you know the stuff that shows up at the top of our newsfeed, what you can do is go to that prospects page, their LinkedIn page, and see what activity they have on their profile. Maybe you endorse them for some of their activities that they're involved in, or you post, um, you, you make a comment on one of their posts. Now generally what we've found is people's prospects, people they're reaching out to generally aren't super active on LinkedIn. So what happens is when you make a comment on their, on, on their post, it just stands out and has a lot, adds a lot more value to them versus someone who gets like 20 comments, 50 comments on a post and yours just gets lost. So it floats your name to the top of their list Plus, people love it when you get, they get comments on their posts because people want to get more engagement. So it's win-win, and if you can endorse them, it's all about, first of all, building trust, adding likability, but mainly getting touch points in, just getting your name in front of them again, getting them to think about you, building up those touch points over time. So that's it, guys. Um, nothing too complicated. The main thing is how do you manage those touch points and understand where everyone's up to? Because as you can imagine, as you start to scale this up, it gets difficult to understand where everyone is up to. So if you're interested in seeing our system, how we manage it, um, feel free to just reach out, head to b2bleads.com, um, book in for a time to chat, and more than happy to share how me and my clients do everything with LinkedIn and keep track of everything and basically generate leads without having to think too hard about it. I hope that's been helpful. As always, Brian Caswell from b2bleads.com, and have a great day. Cheers.